Hello, hello. I am Mark Williamson, a research assistant professor for the University of North Dakota and a statistician for the Biostatistics, Epidemiology, and Research Design Corps. Welcome to my very special talk today, a taxonomy of omics. So, what the point, the goal of this talk is to view a nearly exhaustive grouping of omics. So, omics is a very buzzwordy term in biology, biomedical science, and you see it popping up everywhere. And so it's it's helpful to kind of conceptualize like, well, how are people using it? What sort of terms does it cover? What's the true extent of this word, this concept, this term? So to, to, a little definition before we jump too far ahead of the horse here with our card here. The, the end, the word ohm, really kind of means the totality of whatever X precedes it, so totality of X. Whereas omics then is the study of the totality of whatever that is of X. So the, the, the main example where this initially comes from is genomics, so the study of the totality of the genome. And so then if you're going to use omics in another context, you just put something else in place of genome. So transcriptomics, proteomics, whatever omics and so that's what i mean with when i talk about an omics or omics term so we'll be going over all the ones i could find so uh here's some methods just to kind of talk about how i did this so first of all i searched some some high level resources so looked at infographics on omics to see if i could pull out the terms look at wikipedia there's an omics topic or a list of omics topics also, there is a link to uh, genomics glossaries, which had some sometimes questionable, but at least uh, informative possible omics targets. And then next, I was not content with that. I really wanted to go dive deep. So I actually downloaded abstracts of all PubMed papers while searching with the term omics. It was almost 30,000. So I actually had to split into three sections to, to by publication date to actually download the abstracts from PubMed because they only let you do like 10,000 at a time for some weird reason. Anyways, so then I ran Python code to, to pull out instances of omics using, uh, turning into a term dictionary and then kind of went through and, and removed obvious errors and only kept terms with counts of three or more. So if there was just a omics term that was used once in an abstract, it was thrown out only three or more. Now there, there is a little bit of um, discretion here. Some terms might have just appeared in a single abstract, but appeared three or more times. I, I, I suppose I could have clarified that more in the coding, but I guess for these purposes, it was sort of fast and loose. I didn't, so um, some of these terms might be very specialized. Anyways, moving on, I did a manual search to remove more spurious terms, so things that are like company names, like that had the word omics in it or software had omics in it or spelling errors etc and then went through each term and found a short description either you know pubmed wikipedia wherever so i could have a a a definition of that that specific omics term and then further cut terms that didn't have a good definition or were still spurious and so i had a final list for 255 items using these combined methods and um let, let, let's do it. I'll give you an example of some of these like really low count valid terms that I didn't include, like with three or less, like tomato omics. So I'm assuming the genomics of tomatoes, which is very specialized, and I don't think really anyone else used it for probably other than probably one paper. Now we might have other ones like that are equally obscure that showed up a little bit more, but I had to cut it off somewhere. Also, another thing I didn't include like multi word subfields. And because otherwise you could essentially have an infinite amount of these. So for example, I don't have human genomics because I just have, have things that are all one word. Now, of course, because it, otherwise it could be something like, well, you have human genomics, you have a genomics for every single species, and then it's just, you know, endless. Anyways, so that's that's some, some disclaimers here. All right, more disclaimers. Just because I'm going through all these omics I could find doesn't mean I think they're necessarily a good thing. In fact, we'll see a lot of ones that really shouldn't be called omics. 
And uh, a good paper on this is called Bad Omics Words and the Power and Peril of the Ohm Meme. This is by Jonathan A. Eisen. He has a great quote here. Uh, genomics is a wonderful topic. It has great potential value, but adding ohm or omics to some terms does not suddenly make it genomic-y. The power of genomics is not simply transfer with a suffix. In addition, new concepts do not need to latch on to the ohm meme. They are strong and interesting in and of themselves. Comparisons to genomics can be very useful, but including genomics in some way in the term itself is potentially unwise. So there's going to be a lot of, I think, uh, branches of my taxonomy here that really fall under this bad omics frame. So just, just a heads up here. Uh, another great resource is from uh, PubMed here. This There's this table that kind of talks about, yeah, omics and what's sort of a good omics and what's a bad omics. So things that are helpful, a new focus, refers to a comprehensive collection, easy to say, easy to understand. Those are good. Bad ones are things that renames existing field or limited in scope, unpronounceable or obscure. So for example, uh, pre predestome. That's way too precise. In fact, I don't think that even came up that any of the abstracts I found. Uh, or same with like TR and ohm, that didn't show up, and that's a, like unpronounceable. Uh, Museum, again, museum archives, that didn't show up. And uh, Nutrium, though, that does show up, and that's just a good example of a clear case of, well, we could just do the study of nutrients, doesn't need to be nutriomics. But there we have it. With that all the way, let's talk about some major groupings here. So I tried to conceptualize these or in, into to, to these are like the high level groupings, domains or phyla, if you want to call it, and everything is lower up or more precise as you go on. So uh, within omics itself, there's kind of five main separate groups. So DNA based, RNA based proteins, molecules, others is sort of the grab bag, maybe you could conceptualize a lot, some of these other ones as groups in here, but if it wasn't really clear how you could group them, I, I just threw them in the other as sort of the grab bag. Those are the protists if you're, you're latching this on to a regular taxonomy of life. Anyways, enough discretion aside. And then the, the, the tricky bit is I have this sort of band here, this band of purple I'm calling combined, where it's sort of really clear that this is a clear combination of multiple groupings. So had to figure that out. All right. So then I have the full tree here, which is very exciting and very messy. And there you go. And you probably can't really read much of this at all. So I'm very excited to say that there is a link in the description to this talk that has this full image available as you know a, a high quality uh, image. So you can look at it in detail. And with that being said, let's go through each of these sort of branches, sub-branches, and talk about them. So we start out here with DNA. And I, I've split this up into two just so we could kind of look at some subgroupings of one and the other. So DNA this is probably the most important ones. I'll save genomes to the next slide, but we'll talk. I, so, so, and that, so I'll talk about sequences, genes, and epigenetics here. And so how I do this, I... I start out with like the big picture one. And then if there are big conceptual groupings, I have these smaller, lighter colored circles. And then if there's even smaller sort of conceptual groupings, I, I put them in even smaller ones. And then if ones didn't really f fit into a group of two or more, I just sort of put them as singlets. So it's like these ones are singlets. And, and where I kind of branch them, is, is I, I do my best to sort of group th like things together, but there's only so many spaces I can put here. So sometimes things maybe look closer than than I really think they are, but just for space concerns. So this is this isn't canonical, as I often like to say. This is much more of a conceptual view of things, trying to group things in without being too strict about or or quantitative about how closely they're grouped and branching. All right, with that further, further disclaimer out of the way, let's get down to business. So we'll start at the bottom here with under sequences. I, I kind of have a group called movement. So I have somatonomics and transgenomics. So somatonomics is somatic gene re rearrangements, while transgenomics is genetic inserts. Then moving on to stretches, promoteromics, ORF omics and repeat omics. 
So promoteromics is this, uh, promoters, so those are sequences DNA where proteins bind to initiate transcription. And then ORFomics, which is one of those unpronounceable bad omics. Anyways, it, it's study of open reading frames. And then repeat omics is repetitive sequences. Then here in some singletons, fragmentomics, repeated sequence, or sorry, fragmentomics is DNA fragments, especially uh, CFs or circulating free DNA or cell free DNA. And then uh, hemostasiomics, DNA sequence changes related to disease risk. That was kind of a, seems like a special thing here. Then next on to genes here. So this is sequences, not maybe specifically genes, things for code. These are more genes. So some of the singletons is we have resistomics, which is actually a, a fairly important subfield, which is antibiotic resistance genes. You think of that for bacteria. And then there's uh, invariomics, which is genes that don't change expression from one condition to another, so they're invariantly expressed. And then kind of the unknown category, so pseudogenomics, unknownomics, and ignoromics. It should probably be all the same thing, maybe. So pseudogenomics is study of pseudogenes. Unknownomics, genes with no functional information, and ignoromics, uncharacterized genes. So, okay. Next, we have a very important subfield, epigenetics. And so kind of starting up here uh, in the pharmacology subsection is uh, pharmacal epigenomics and pharmacal methylomics. So epigenomics and pharmacology and methylomics respectively. Then epigenomics itself. And I it really like seminal fields, subfields, omics fields. I, I color the, the bars, the boxes in the, the, the coloring of it, its main group. So epigenomics is here. And so that's epigenetic modification of genetic material. Uh, chromatinomics is chromatinomics. Methylomics is DNA methylation patterns. So these are all subsets of epigenomics. Uh, nucle nucleosomics. So the nucleosome is a basic DNA packing in eukaryotes. And then nutra epigenomics is nutrition and epigenomics. So one of these sort of mashup ones. Okay, with that, let's turn over to the genomes. Okay, here, so I, I, I put genomes up in the forefront and then kind of push the rest off to the side here, modulated them. So uh, starting here in the light green, we have, of course, genomics, the study of genomes. Then kind of going here, these are definitely obscure, and I would kind of throw these all under bad omics. Not, not that other ones aren't, but this is a good starting off the ballpark example. So we have alternative methods. So there's chimidomics, uh, which is traditional Chinese medication, medicine and omics. Fangiomics, traditional Chinese medicine using the fangi herbs. So it's really specific. Uh, there's uh, aruginomics. So that's an Indian alternative medicine and genomics. And then herb genomics, herbal medicine and genomics. Uh, next, we have disease. So there's, give me a moment here. There's psychogenomics, genomes and behavioral abnormalities, oncogenomics, cancer associated genes. So, aka canceromics, that's another name for it. And then there's atherogenomics, if, uh, ethereal sclerosis genomics, so artery lesion disease. This is another good example. Like, this is way too specific. This is kind of a bad omics term. And now, I think probably from now on, I'll try to stop just saying what what is bad omics and not because it'll bog us down too much. Anyways, but if there's an especially especially a grievous example, I might bring it up again. Moving right along here, some singletons, immunogenomics, so genomes for immunotherapy, subset of genomics and immunomics. And you'll see this happening a lot. There'll, there'll be a certain prefix, so like pharmaco, immuno, neuro, and it, it might show up a lot of different places. There might be immunogenomics or immunomics, immune transomics, whatever. So just a heads up, you, you might see things that seem very familiar in different places because they are conceptually familiar, but I have to place them somewhere. And how I place things, things might seem further than they, they maybe are under other schemas. So just keep that in mind. Anyways, neurogenomics or yeah, genomics for the nervous system and toxigenomics, gene activity, 
within a particular cell or tissue in response to exposure to toxic substance. So this would be a subset of pharmacology. So speaking of pharmacology, uh, there is pharmacomics, a genome and drug response, pharmacogenomics, role of genome and drug response, pharmacomicrobiomics, microbiomics and pharmacology, and then pharmacophylogenomics, so pharmacology and phylogenomics. And some of these things could probably be collapsed together into one topic. Next, some more simulcon, singletons, nutrigenomics, effect of foods and food components on gene expression. So it's a brand of nutritional genomics, such a subset of nutriomics. There's agrogenomics, so genomes for agriculture. Kind of more in the ecology, ecology group, we have pathogenomics, microbe resistance, virulence factor, et cetera, for disease, ecotoxigenomics, Ecology talks only in genomics, maybe even transcriptomics. Anyways, uh, this is another very niche one, archaeomics, archaea genomes, uh, agenomics, genomes in the environment, or so, sorry, I guess I guess you pronounce this e-genomics, Germans, genomes and the environment. Then there's probiogenomics, so probiotic mechanisms. So more on the meta side, one of these big topics. Another big topic is metagenomics, genetic material recovered directly from the environment or clinical samples, aka environmental genomics, ecogenomics, community genomics, or microbiomics. Though typically I would call microbiomics its own subset, so which I have here. Community of microorganisms in a habitation location, especially, especially in in like an organ within an organism, say like the human microbiome. Then there's a Hologenomics, which is the host of genomes for a holobiont. So a hyalbone is an organism together with its cohabitating micro microbes. So this is a variant of microbiomics. And then pangenomics is union of all genomics in a genomes in a clade. Moving on to chromosomes. So we have chromiomics, chromosomes and omics, chromosomics. Or yeah, so, so there's chromonomics and chromosomics. Chromosomics is 3D morphological changes of chromosomes, and cytogenomics is chromosomal behavior and genetics, especially with cell division. Again, the, the real difference between these two might be non-existent or trivial or just different papers presented in a different way, and they're really kind of the same. Anyways, then there's singulomics, single cell genomics. On the social side, we have physiomics, so uh, the physiome, so physical Physiological features associated with genetics. This is also known as, physio I've also seen it as physionomics. There's exposomics, so exposures, so like the environment, diet, lifestyle, et cetera, and health. And then sociogenomics. So this is social genomics, social factors that affect the activity of the genome. On, on the image side, there's radiogenomics, genetic variation associated with radiation response, though I've actually heard an alternative where it's cancer imaging features in gene expression. So take that with what you will. There's histogenomics, so it talks about histology, microscopic anatomy of biological tissues, and then that allied with genomics. Finally, a couple more singletons with a grab bag here. There's paleogenomics, so genomics for extinct species, aka I've also um, seen it per, pronounced slightly differently or spelled slightly differently with an additional A, paleogenomics or something. And then there's phylogenomics, so genome data and evolutionary reconstruction. And then exomics, maybe, I think this might refer to exons. Anyways, but it's the 1% of genomes most easily interpreted and most likely to cause noticeable phenotypes. Okay, well, that was DNA. Let's switch over to a much smaller topic, RNA. So straight right off the bat here to the left, we have just transcriptomics in general. This is RNA transcripts. So that is gonna be DNA that's transcribed into messenger RNA, which is eventually translated into a protein. So that's the biggest field. Then there's things with variants. So there's RNA omics. So this is, I think supposed to be RNA in general. So not just messenger RNA. And then there's Rnomics, which is non-coding RNA, 
aka I've seen this a lot of spelled a lot of different way. This is sort of that good example of unpronounceable. So there, I've seen there's seen them pronounce or spelled as N C R N A omics or N C R omics or C R N omics. And then there's myr myrnomics, microRNA. And again, I've seen this in a bunch of variants. M I R N A omics, micro R N omics, micro R N A omics, and myromics. So whole big bag of wax over there. Then there's a single detenue radio transcriptomics. So features from medical imaging and transcriptomics. Think about some modification. There's edictomics, so RNA editing sites, and epitranscriptomics, so modification of RNA structure or modifi modification of RNA itself. Whereas structure omics is modification RNA structure, the study of this structure. Then there's metatranscriptomics, so RNA transcripts from the environment. So this is uh, analog or paralog of or parallel, similar to. There's metagenomics, so there's metatranscriptomics. And of course, later on, we'll see there will be metaproteomics. And finally, sort of under this space and time, I, I have a spatial omics, so spatial transcriptomics, assigning cell types to a location, is histological sections, or determining subcellular localization of mRNA molecules. And then there's temporal omics, is transcriptomics, but with lineages or past molecular events for time, so things across space and time. Time. That was short and rather sweet. Let's get into the complicated mess of proteins. Oh boy, we've got a lot around here, so let's get right to it. I'm going to start down here with proteomics itself. So, of course, it's the study of proteins. Uh, I've also he heard it called proteinomics, but proteomics is really the the the, the main the main term. So starting uh, moving along to disease here, we have allergenomics, so protein allergens, uh, atheroproteomics, so this is for arterial lesion disease proteins, oncoproteomics, so cancer associated proteins, obesidomics, obesity related proteins, that's kind of a bad omics. And a pathy pathyproteomics, so proteomics of pathogens, then shifting in here, squeezing in for space under the toxic subcategory, toxic coproteomics, protein activation response to toxicants, related to pharmacology, of course, venomics, proteins associated with venom and antivenomics, so proteins associated with um, uh, antivenom, so uh, venom proteins bearing epitomes recognized by an antivenom, anyways. You can see that these two are cl closely related. So under sort of the various topic here I have, I guess this is um, in some ways kind of like a uh, singleton, but they, they kind of, I, I could all fit them here. Anyways, so there's allomeomics, so allotypes or alleolic protein variants, cytochromics, so that's, so you have cytochromes, redox activating proteins contained in heme. Uh, inferomics, inferon, so a group of singling proteins. Lactinomics, lactin, so carbohydrate binding proteins. Microproteomics, so small proteins encoded from a small open reading frame and having a singular protein domain. Then there's peptidomics, short change of amino acids, linked by peptide bonds. So there's ribosomics, ribosomal proteins, terminomics, terminal sequences in proteins. This is also uh, called N-terminomics sometimes, and then ubiquitinomics. So you, the say the ubiquitin proteasome system, where ubiquitin is a small regulated protein found in most eukaryotic tissues. And then finally over here, because I didn't have space because of the Dakota, there's uh, phosphoproteomics. This is proteins contain a phosphate group as a post-translational modification. Switching over to ecology for a little bit here. You can see here that some of these subsets really uh, happen in all the groups here. Anyways, there's ecotoxic proteomics, 
which is ecology, toxicology, and proteomics. Parasitomics, so secretome, the, the secretions of parasites that mediate parasitization. It's also a subset of secretomics, which we'll, I think, see here pretty soon. Yeah, uh, in the next couple of uh, iterations. Okay, uh, there is metaproteomics, so proteins from the environment. We've seen this same sort of pattern with metagenomics, metatranscriptomics, and now metaproteomics. Over on spatial, there's transportomics, gene products that are transported, so it's related to secretome, the secretode, secretome, which we'll see very soon now. We're getting uh, toponomics, so topological proteomics, so top, topology is the project of geometric objects preserved under deformations. It's very mathy. Anyways, where is our secret? Ah, yeah, secretomics. So secreted proteins of cell tissue or organism. So things that come out. And that's then there's local lysomics. So presence or absence of proteins in particular cells or cellular uh, compartments. For that finishes up spatial. So look at post translation. So there's uh, acetylomics. So acetylation. So that's pro, pro tr post translational modification of proteins. There's Activomics, so differentiational pro protein post translational modification activities. Proteoglycomics, which is studies proteoglycan, so those are post translationally modified subset. There's, and just in general, kind of the, 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 the general form of post translational topics is pro post translatomics, which nearly avoids the two word split by having a was it a hyphen? So these are functional change post translation, and then PT momics or PT momics. Anyways, that's post translational modification. Again, this these might be actually the same thing, though they appear different in different places. Anyways, let's go on to uh, before. Let's not let's not lose this one. But there's a functionomics down here. Functional genomics, so functional entities in cells such as enzyme functions. And it's also known. Um, I guess I said functionomics. This is actually, I guess you'd say functomics. There is also a functionomics as a alternative spelling. Okay, folding. We have foldomics, folding of the sequence to structure. Uh, chaperomics, so, so chaperones are proteins that assist in protein folding. Uh, this is also known as chaperomics, not chaperonomics. There's epichaperomics, so uh, scaffold platen for chaperones. And sort of the epi version of chaperonomics. And finally, unfoldomics, so studying natively unfolded proteins. A couple singletons down here nutri proteomics, so food and nutrition, so subset of nutriomics and proteomics. Agroproteomics, so proteomics in agriculture, just like we saw that for genomics, etc. Then under enzymes, because enzymes are an important subset of proteins, we have enzymomics, enzyme study of enzymes so allogomics so characterization of biodegradable enzymes from algae pretty niche here our niche uh there's degradomics so proteins studies proteins proteases so enzymes that break down other proteins their inhibitors and their substrates kinomics so kinases enzymes that catalyze the transfer of phosphate groups part uh, part of of course the proteomics and then phosphatomics so studying phosphate phosphatases Enzymes that use water to cleave a phosphoric acid monomer into a phosphate ion and an alcohol. Then shifting back here, make sure we don't miss these singletons. There's metalloproteomics, so metallo, metallomics and proteomics, and then nanoproteomics, proteomics for small populations of spell, cells, especially rare cell populations. Then here with the nervous system, we have Neuropeptidomics, so peptidomics for nervous systems, and neuroproteomics, so proteomics for nervous system. Everyone, everyone gets a nervous, or everyone gets a proteomics. Okay, finally, finally, with some immune things back and forth here, we have immunopeptidomics, so peptides and then immunity, antibiomics, so antibodies, so those are the proteins used by the immune system to ID and neutralize foreign objects. There's auto and antigenomics. So autoantigens, which simulates production of autoantibodies, antibodies that turn on their own system. Epitomics, so uh, 
epitopes, so those are parts of an antigen that is recognized and bound by antibodies. And then immunoproteomics, so a broader category, proteins involved in immune response. So that would be a subset of immunomics in general. And then uh, peptide biomics, so looking at polypeptide uh, antibodies. And then pharmacoproteomics, kind of a symbol, singleton kind of related to immune system, is proteomics and pharmacology. Okay, that was that was proteins. That was a lot, but you ain't seen nothing yet. We're going to get to the other category, and it's gonna get it's gonna get hairy. Let's have a little gentle interlude with what I'm calling the molecule. This is probably the least coherent class. I kind of split it up into metabolism things. We're clearly doing with metabolism because metabolomics is a pretty broad or big category. And then I'm calling what other things are chemicals slash molecules. Maybe these fall into proteins or metabolism or whatnot, but I didn't have, it, it wasn't entirely clear, so I kind of kept it more broader general term of calling them chemicals or molecules. So there we go. Anyways, let's start with metabolomics. So that's metabolites, small molecule substrates, intermediates, and products of cell metabolism. And of course, there's metabolomics applied to all members of a sample. So can like uh, a variant of metabolomics and metagenomics. Then there's lipids. So lipidomics is is a fairly important subset. It's dealing with lipids, so subset of the metabolism. Uh, phospholipidomics, so phospholipids, lipids with a phosphate group on the head. There's and these ones are all going to be bad omics here. Sphingolipidomics. So sphingolipids are bioactive lipids in fungi. And then glycosphingolipidomics. I can't even pronounce that. That's, that's a bad sign. Those are a subclass of sphingolipids. Then going over to the volatile side of things. After trying to pronounce this, I get pretty volatile. Anyways, volatilomics and breathomics. So volatile... Lomics are vial, vial, volatile organic compounds emitted from biological systems, aka volatilomics. And then breathomics is a subset. It's vol, volatile organi, organic compounds from exhaled breath samples. And then under kind of the special metabolism, there's parvomics. Par, it studies the parvomes. So these are secondary metabolites. And there's exometabolomics. It is extracellular metabolites and then arsenomics, so arsenic metabolism in plants. That's kind of specialized. And then toxometabolomics, so metabolomics and toxicology. Under pharmacology, of course, there's pharmacometabolomics, so pharmacology and metabolomics. And then, uh, so there's below mix and bonomics. And the, the nomics is, I guess, yeah, these are, these are really hard to kind of tell a, tell apart. That they're, they're probably really the same thing. I, I guess the first one, no mix, low mix, is similar to pharmacogenomics and a subset of metabolomics, where this one is even metabolisms and pharmacology per se, rather than pharmacogenomics. Anyways. Let's, we can move on here. Let, speaking of moving on, let's get philosophical. This is the best term I could get for this because these are, these are also hard to tell apart. There's metabolomics and metanomics. So for the first one here, it's the measure of the global dynamic metabolic responses to living systems to biological similar or genetic manipulation. It's really a philosophical difference from metabolomics which is, which I guess they call metabolomics is analytical and this is more sort of holistic or, or philosophical. And then metanomics is functional genomics for the metabolite analysis. So it's like the essence of it. Anyways, let's get some fun little one-offs here. Flexomics, rates of metabolic reactions within a biological entity. Sportsomics, metabolomics apply to sports. Nutrimetabolomics, so nutritional metabolomics, of course, similar to nutrigenomics. Okay, I think that's all on the metabolism side. Let's turn over to sort of the chemical side. We have adductomics, 
DNA addicts, so these are compounds that bind to DNA and cause damaging mutations. Subomics, subset of molecules with certain properties of localization. And then interactomics, set of molecular interactions in a cell. And they're under some sort of specific types. There's CPomics, so chemical profiling. Speciomics, so chemical speciation. Under the element side, this is a fairly good, important subject. Ionomics, total elemental composition of organisms. Uh, metalomics, so metal and metalloid species within a cell or tissue type. And then there's nanometalomics, so uh, metal-related nanomaterial, so obviously a subset of metalomics, very closely related. And uh, immunomics, of course, immune system regulation response. Uh, it's also known as um, immuneomics. So I think that the point where this is here and not somewhere else is because it's about the the regulation, so whatever that means, kind of more on the chemical molecular side. Okay, on the drug side, targetomics, drug targets, placebiomics, uh, placebos, so those are substances without pharmacological activity. Under disease, inflammasomics, so molecules related to inflammation, redoxomics, oxidative stress or redox, skinomics, molecular effects of UV on skin, and nocturomics, so this is a this is definitely bad omics. It's noctura biomarkers so the nocturne is the need for nighttime voiding so having to go go to the bathroom anyways on to ecology this is very uh, again kind of niche niche uh, humeomics so chemical comp compound of soil hummus sedimentomics sediment organic matter signaling hormonomics so these are signaling molecules transductomics signaling pathways and then uh, Exaconomics, so these are ES, I can't pronounce this today, okay. Ecosenoids, so those are signaling molecules made by oxidation of arachidonic acid or other similar acid. There is tox, toxomics, so toxins, aka toxicomics. Phytochemiomics, so these are phytochemical, plant chemical compounds used to resist infections. Ligandomics, so ligands, ions or molecules that bind to a central metal atom to form a coordinated complex. Then MSomics, so mass spectrometry, so those are, uh, mass spectrometry is the measurement of mass to charge ratio of ions, so I guess the study of the data produced by that. And phreganomics, so small, relatively simple molecules. This is Different from then, I think it was it fragment omics, which are just small pieces of DNA. So these are just molecules. Okay, that was fun. Now, let us embrace the vast sea of other. Where to start? Well, let's start at the very bottom here because why not? You can see this is just littered with trying to find space to put things. All right, yeah. Under what well, I guess I'm calling disease, uh, psychiatomics, there we go, factors involved in psychiatric diseases, rehabilomics, uh, rehabilitation, sleepomics, differences in oscillation in speed, sleep, uveomics, ultraviolet omics, painomics, pain, pain, so stuff to do with pain, uh, backomics, brain apparitions, con conversions, especially brain disorders. And these are all on the other because it's not clear like what actual molecules or or types they're, the, the research is targeting just very broad and unclear. Glaucomics, so uh, treat eye disorders. Salvaomics, so saliva, especially for disease con conditions. Septaomics, so studying sepsis, body's response to infections. And then vectoromics, so looking at uh, bodies, uh, uh, disease transmitting organisms. Then under dose here, we have drugomics, dromics, and doseomics. So drugomics is drug monitoring, uh, dromics is dose response, and then doseomics is dose distribution through organism and structure. These probably could be, some of these could be collapsed together, but hey, that's what I found in the literature. Under viruses, we have Viromics, viral genomes, vaccinomics, so vaccines, COVIDomics, of course, COVID vaccine, or not COVID vaccine, just COVID, and adversomics, so adverse vaccine reactions. Moving along to some food here, 
uh, nutriomics, so food and nutrition on health, sensomics, so sensory properties of food at molecular level, such as odor. This is a subset of foodomics. Then there is hygienomics, so hygiene and food safety, and then feedomics, food to animals. There's ecology, we have plant omics, so plant omics, environment omics, or so environmental conditions, crop omics, so crop genomics, or general omics. Under images, we have image omics. Images, uh, biomedical especially, it's also known as imiomics, or imaginomics, image there's pathomics, Image analysis to generate quantitative features of tissue sampling phenotype, also described as digitized pathology. Radiomics, features for medical images, especially CT, PET, PR. Ramenomics, not ramen, like ramen food, but ramen spectrog uh, spectrometry. And then RPRS FRMI omics, this is a very bad omics. Uh, this is resting state functional MRI. Then there's some of these singletons, nan uh, nanomics, so nanotechnology and omics, under materials, materiomics, material systems, so links between physiochemical material and uh, characterization and function. There's biomaterialomics, so multiomics data and high dimensional analysis with artificial intelligence through an entire pipeline of biomaterials development. It's fairly abstract. Anyways, Morphomics, so totality of morphological features within a system. There is the nervous system, so neuromics, so omics for the nervous systems, connectomics, the uh, connectomes, so comprehensive maps of connections within an organism's nervous system, and then synaptomics, so synapses. Those are the structures that per permits neurons to pass signal. There's organomics, so organ interactions. And then within the cell, there's cytomics, cell systems at the single cell level, molecular, architectural, and functionality of cell systems. Cellomics, quantitative cell analysis using bioimaging methods and informatics. So it's a variant, it could be called an Im variant of imaging, but I have it here under cell. SC multiomics, so single cell multiomics. Embryonomics, cell lineages of embryonic cells, genes expressed and antigens present during development. Complex omics, so complex cellular processes, nuclei omics, nucleus and omics, RB comics, red blood cell, red blood cell omics, and mechanomics. This is mechanical systems. And then membrane omics, so biological membranes. Under mitochondria, so mito mitoco, I just because I can't fit it otherwise. Anyways. Mitogenomics, genome of the mitochondrion, and mitochondriomics, function of the mitochondria. These could probably be condensed to each other. And then one calling niche, just like really obscure, kind of, these are probably all bad omics. Bibliomics, high quality and rare information. Chu omics, so this is this is like the, the poster child of bad omics, where it is Chinese hamster over ovary omics. So you don't need an omics for a specific species of rodent. Anyways, cryobiomics, so this is cryopreservation, crystallomics, cr crystallography, Mars omics, omics of the Mar planet Mars, uh, mastic omics, bovine milk, veteranomics, veterinary medicine and omics, and then wine omics, wine and omics, and don't need wine, have their own omics. Behavior omics, behavioral uh, uh, study with behavior, personomics, this is all in their social, uh, unique influences on the person. This is a very fuzzy topic. Uh, definition, research omics, research areas covered by an individual, individual research or institution. Again, this is a very bad omics. Sociomics, social traits and population. Speech omics, influences on language acquisition and trial omics, human interventional trial data from clinical trial registries. Could all just probably nix that too. Anyways, phenomics, phenomes, second here. So phenomics, so this is the phenotype, so uh, observable traits of an organism. We've also seen as phenogenomics. 
There's taxonomics, so classification of organisms, especially using amplicon sequencing. Systemomics, systems biology, aka systemomics. Cytomics, single site resolved multiomics. Chronomics, biological patterns across time, and then kind of in the meta category, meta taxonomics. Classification of all organisms applied to all members of a sample, especially using amplicon sequencing. Cultural mix, cultured strains or species from samples. That's an alternative to metagenomics. Then under the, finally, under the clinical side, we have clinical omics, clinical data omics, aka clinomics. Uh, and then this is clin lab omics, clinical laboratory omics. Again, that's a bad omics. And now, one thing I, I think that maybe then gets shown up here is is there's all these things there, but there should be a, I think like a food omics here too. That That's a subset of things that maybe didn't get, kind of got lost here. With that, let's turn to the combined section. That's our last section left. Okay here, so we kind of have them all under RNA, DNA, proteins, molecules. The other didn't really overlap too much, or if it did overlap, it just got stuck into the, to the other. Okay, starting at the bottom here, the overlap between DNA and molecules, we have metabologenomics, so metabolomics and genomes, especially in regard to finding metabolomics or me metabolite, metabolites for microbes. Chemogenomics, so this is chemical genomics, screening of targeted chemical libraries of small molecules to develop drugs. Then under sort of DNA and RNA is regulomics, so regulation of gene transcription. In the overlap between RNA and proteins, we have uh, expressomics, so these are transcripts, proteins, and other ligands, so it's similar to uh, transcriptomics. And then proteotranscriptomics, which combines proteomics and transcriptomics, which is totally unneeded. We just use the term separately. Anyways. Off my high horse, let's get in the intersection between DNA, RNA, and proteins. We have, of course, the the the, the premier term for this is just simply multiomics, use of multiple omics together, aka integrative omics, panomics, also dual omics, polyomics, triomics, floromics, joint omics, multilayer omics, serial omics, triple omics, any omics, two omics, different omics, gestaltomics, mo Mo, momics, quadromics, operomics. These are all terms that I found that are that that are are analogous to multiomics. So I just use multiomics, not any of those other sort of garbage terms. Anyways, moving on here is variomics. That is variants of DNA, RNA, proteins, uh, translatomics. So open reading frames that are being actively translated. Proteogenomics, so it combines proteomics, genomes, and in fact, transcriptomics. Again, just use multiomics here. Not, but we don't need to just mash terms together like that. Oncoproteogenomics, again, that's a subset of oncogenomics where you, you deal with uh, uh, progenomics, transcriptomics, and genomics of cancer. You can just you can just say ontogenomics or multiomics, whatever you say. Oh, here we go. Sorry, th th there's where food omics turned up here. Food omics, which is food and nutrition through omics integration. And and it's often talked about of having genomics, trenches, and proteomics. And in fact, actually, um, all of these and having uh, the, the molecule too, uh, like metabolomics. But I guess can, you could can sort of in your head just move this down so it overlaps everything. Though I don't know if there's a overlap everything box here. Anyways. Okay, let's switch over to the proteins and molecule subset here to round out our day. There's chemoproteomics, so protein small molecule interaction. So this is related to chemo, uh, chemogenomics. Glycomics, so looking at the glycome, then entire complement of sugars, uh, free form glycoproteins, glycolipids, etc. Glyco glycoproteomics, so subset of proteomics and glycomics. And then there's N-glycomics, so these are Glycomics, but with the N-glycans, that's apparently a type of glycomes. And then O-glycomics, which is O-glycones, a subset of glycomes that are O-linked. These really should not be used at all. These are bad omics. They're hard to pronounce. They're really specific. Just throw them into glycomics if you really need to. Uh, and I think these are that these other ones are going to have the same boat because N-glycoproteomics is 
glycopronyms with and glycons. Just get rid of the whole thing, throw them somewhere else. Anyways, and then lipoproteomics, another mashup, lipidomics and proteomics. Whew. All right, we got through all that. Hopefully this was a interesting, at least at the very least interesting, if not helpful, overview of all sorts of taxonomies of omics that you could want for. Anyways, uh, the CODA, of which most of my funding comes from, is supported by NIH. So if you find this helpful, uh, please, please cite us. And uh, hopefully, yeah, again, hopefully you had fun with this, found this model useful in some way. So now, now go out and, and face omics with certainty now that you've faced the omics taxonomy and won. Have a great day.